It's time to break a bad habit of manually referencing many worksheets or tabs. Let's level up today by learning about the indirect function that allows us to work smarter with references. Here we have an Excel file with 12 monthly tabs. Here's January, or January, February, March, and a totals tab which will summarize the data for the 12 individual tabs. By writing one function, I can reference all of the other worksheets with a single click. Looks too easy, right? Let's break down how I did this. Most users, including myself, will normally click over to each worksheet to reference the cell we want to bring over. This is perfectly okay if you only have a few cells to reference. It's simple as inputting the equal sign and then click on the cell to be referenced. Let's do this for the January sales and cost amounts. Worked without a problem. And now if you copy down the sales here down to the February column, you'll see that it has a zero. And the reason is, is that Excel does not have any way of understanding that I want to represent or I want to reference another worksheet. Instead, we have to build those references. So once again, I would sit here and do an equal sign, go to the February tab and hit sales. Now, I think we all understand the problem here. I have 12 rows of data that I have to reference each one individually. But what if I had 50 worksheets or 100 worksheets that could represent products or departments? I will spend way too much time referencing all of these worksheets. Instead, we should consider utilizing the indirect function to dynamically determine the worksheet name that we want to reference. First, you need the structure of the total worksheet so that all the individual worksheet names are on the page. Here you'll see in column C, I have all the months of the year already added. In looking at the January tab, we'll see that the sales value is in cell C5 and cost are in D5. Those will be the cell references that we'll have with, for January and all of the other months as well. We'll remember here that for sales, it's 75, 89 is that we want to bring over. So before we actually make the change, let's go through and work through the function together and explain what it's going to do, and then we'll add it above. So in doing this one, it's very simple. You're gonna be doing it in equals direct, and then we wanna lock in column C on this table right here and we're gonna put in the dollar sign to lock in column C. And because we're gonna start out on row six, we'll put a six here. And then when it goes down to February, March, it'll be seven, eight, nine, et cetera. Then we're gonna put in an ampersand, a quote mark, an exclamation point, because an exclamation point is always the separator between the tab or the worksheet and the cell we're going to reference. And then we talked about it, we're gonna put in C, five, close quotes, and then close parentheses. So this will be the simple formula that we have to enter to bring over the sales from January. So what exactly does this do? Right? What is the indirect functions doing? Effectively, it's telling Excel we want the following formula. So it's going to be equals Jan, um, exclamation point, and then C5. That's exactly how it's going. That's what it's going to build. It's what we could do manually by clicking around, but that's what it's going to build here. And then when we bring it down to the February, it'd be doing the same thing. So equals Feb, exclamation point, C5, et cetera, and so on and so on. So that's exactly, that's what the indirect is doing. It's dynamically making the January and February for us when we need to apply it many times. So let's go ahead and enter this in. So I'll go up here to the January sales one and let's start putting this in. So I'm gonna start typing in indirect see that it's already here so i tab so it builds out the rest of it once again we want to put in a dollar sign c6 ampersand quote exclamation c5 quote and then close parentheses and when i enter this now if we did it right let's cross our fingers we should be in the what was it the 75 almost 7600 value perfect right there so now let's say i want to copy this over to cost so I'm just gonna do a copy and paste, and right away something is wrong. It's still bringing over the same one. And the reason is, is that we did hard code in this formula to bring over C5. So we're gonna to need to bring in D5, because D5 is where the cost is. So I'm gonna highlight here, and 
replace the C with a D, and now we'll see that it's bringing in the right cost. I already applied a profit formula, which is just column D minus E, sales minus cost equals profit. And right there is how we complete this. Now, obviously that seems more difficult than just, e just manually referencing it over, but where the magic obviously is, is once I highlight both of these and then copy down by double clicking in the lower right-hand corner, once it, I get the, the dark plus sign there, it will go over and pull all of these values from each individual tab. So right there, it's a little bit slower for the first function or two, but then it just goes lightning quick when I wanna bring the rest of it down. Now let's demonstrate that this is working the way we think it should by actually breaking it. So we have right here, let's look at the March or the MAR value we have right here. You know that down in the tab, it's actually spelled MAR, but let's say I didn't realize that or I wrote over it and typed in March, it's going to return reference errors. And that's because it's not finding a tab or a worksheet with the name March. It's just MAR, so that's what's gonna break it. So it's a way to know this is working correctly or not. I can easily fix this by just going back and putting in MAR and it'll go back to normal. Now that you understand how indirect works and how we can utilize it to reference other worksheets, let's talk about the limitations and how we can manage each one. Limitation number one is that the worksheet names must match and be accurate. If someone adds a new worksheet name or they rename a worksheet, this will break the formula or not display all of the necessary data. Now there are Excel or VBA functions that can automatically return all of the names of the worksheets you would like. It basically creates a table of contents. This is a bit more advanced than this video, but you can go out to Google and I'd recommend Googling how to display all of the Excel worksheet names if you wanna see some examples of how to um, build a listing of all of the worksheets or tab names on another tab. The second limitation is one that we went over a little bit, and that is that hard coding the referenced rows and columns can lead to problems. If anyone ever adds rows or columns to the individual tabs, it will break the formula for that. So I would actually think of if you're doing something and you can't control how any of the other tabs will work, I would recommend embedding this indirect formula into a larger XLOOKUP formula to identify which rows or columns that you want to return. It gets a little bit more trickier, so we're not gonna cover that in this video, but XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP, if you want to go a little bit more old school, will actually allow you to be a little bit smarter about how you reference them. But all in all, please be careful with managing the limitations. Now that you know the indirect function, do you know of any situations in which you would utilize it? Please comment below and thanks for watching.